Fluxroots has been in development for nearly four years, and in that time has became the largest One Piece game on Roblox. Today, we're going to be covering the entire history of Fluxroots in under eight minutes. Fluxroots first began development in the beginning of 2019 under the group Gamer Robot Incorporated. They currently have a team of 16 people, but back in 2019, there were only five people working on the game. The game wasn't always called Fluxroots either. During the initial release and beta testing, it was called Blogs Piece, but was later changed because of copyright. We'll talk more about that. Uh, later, by the way. The team of five people had already made four different games prior to Flux Roots, so when One Piece games started getting popular, it was no surprise that they also wanted to make one. The initial development began on January 16th, 2019, where they would remain in development and beta for nearly five months. It wasn't until June 18th, 2019 that Flux Roots would fully release under the name Flux Piece. The content of the game was very limited at the time. The only good Flux Roots in the game were Quake and Buddha, and the highest level you can get was level 300. They they were very anti pay to win at first, with the only game passes being Dark Blade, Fast Boats, Double Money, and Double Mash. You couldn't buy any double XP boosts. All you were really able to do at the time was level up and travel. There was no second or third C, and there were only 10 islands in the game. This lack of content led to people leveling up extremely fast and then pretty much quitting after one day. Bloodstreets eventually realized this problem, and Update 3 was released. The reason they released Update 3 is because 1 and 2 were actually released while the game was in beta. Update 3 caused Bloxroots to absolutely skyrocket in popularity. The max level was raised to 650, which was over double the previous max level. Quake and Budo were no longer the only good fruits. We also had String and Rumble. They added four new islands, Magma Village, Underwater City, Skylands Expansion, and Coliseum. A widely hated Phoenix fruit received a massive nerf, and all of these factors made the community extremely happy. This massive amount of content caught the attention of several large YouTubers such as Axewer, Official Newbie, The Great Ace, and other these YouTubers made hundreds of videos, causing the game to even further skyrocket in popularity. The YouTuber Axiwer brought so much popularity to the game, in fact, that the devs gave him admin commands. Everything was going well for Bloxroots, and the game was more popular than ever. Because of this, they decided to release Update 4 less than a week later. Update 4 gave us Sandfruit and Darkblade, but also began the Bloxroots pay to win era. With the immense popularity that the game was gaining, the team noticed a big opportunity to make money. You were now able to buy the Fruit Notifier Game Pass for 3,000 Robux, and this was extremely overpowered. Bloxroots also added various boosts into the game, such as double XP, race rerolls, and sat refunds. They received quite a lot of hate for this, but you couldn't really blame them. They had just created one of the most popular games on Roblox at the time. Ever since this update release, Bloxroots was soaring in popularity, reaching new player peaks almost every day. They continued doing weekly updates to keep up with the growing need for new content, and less than a week later, Update 5 was released. This update was revolutionary for multiple reasons. Not only was the max level raised to 750, but the gravity fruit was also added. This was one of the best fruits of the time and everyone wanted to get it. Update 5 also added the first accessory to the game, which was Cool Shades. The addition of accessories was revolutionary for Blogs fruits and everyone loves them. Cool Shades was the best thing in the game at the time, and it gave you a 17% speed increase. Blogs fruits was still getting quite a lot of hate for being paid to win from the last update, but this didn't stop them from adding the ability to to buy fruits with Robux. Hey to win hate aside though, the community was very happy with this update. Blox fruits was now much more difficult to beat and there wasn't really a need for weekly updates anymore. This didn't mean they weren't working hard though. Two weeks after update 5, we already had update 6. The two week wait was definitely worth it and the hype for this update was absolutely insane. Crews were added to the game and you could now team with your friends to get the highest bounty possible. If that wasn't enough, this update also released the pirate and marine teams changing PvP forever. Players finally had a purpose to keep playing once they reached max level instead of just quitting the game. You and your crew could hunt down other players as a team and the hype for Bloxroots was higher than it had ever been. The developers realized the concept of quality over quantity and after another two week break, Update 7 was released. Update 7 however was a huge, huge disappointment. disappointment. The developers promised another update after two weeks but didn't have enough time to finish everything and this update overall caused a massive player drop. All of this caused the Bloxroot developers to completely disappear off social media for three months. Lots of people thought it was over for Bloxroots. They were no longer promising a set update time, and this worried many people. Despite the community backlash, Bloxroots would return at the end of November and release the biggest update yet. The player count doubled, everyone was hyped. We had five new islands, the Kingdom of Rose, Green Zone, Dark Area, Grave Road, and Uslop's Islands. There were so many islands now, in fact, that they had to make a second seat. The max level was also raised to 1,000. The ship system was also completely 
completely reworked, you can now damage ships which made PvP way more fun. Almost every fruit in the game received a massive rework, and you can now gift fruits with Robux. This was the best time to be playing Blox Fruits, and the game was at its peak. Everyone was happy, but there was one problem. Copyright. Blox Fruits received an email from the creators of One Piece threatening to delete the game off Roblox for being too similar to the anime. Massive games like Pokemon Brick Runs and Football Fusion have been fully wiped off of Roblox because of copyright. Gamer Robot had to make a careful decision, and they had to do it quick. The team would disappear for another month as they figured out what to do. On Christmas of 2019, Gamer Robot would return once again. They had planned a massive holiday update, but this would have to be postponed for next year because of copyright. The game was renamed from Blocks Peace to Blocks Fruits, and almost everything had been removed. Every island and every fruit had been completely changed, so it had zero resemblance to the One Piece anime. All fruits used to be a round sphere, but were changed to be a cube. Every boss and NPC received a full outfit change to make them not look like the ones in the anime, and the game was left unrecognizable. There was a clear difference between Blocks Peace and Blocks Fruits, and the community preferred Blocks Peace much more. The player count was going down every day, and the developers had no idea what to do. The team would disappear for another four months, but somehow, out of nowhere, with no updates at all, Blocks Fruits randomly skyrocketed again. This was because everyone had to do quarantine for reasons I can't say on YouTube. I'm talking about the cough cough thing. Millions of new players were introduced to Blocks Fruits during this time, and the developers finally had an opportunity to keep going. In April of 2020, they would return and release Update 10, which came with the Hot and Cold Island, Control Fruit, the Jin and Kogo Swords, and the Zebra Cap. This update seemed pretty small, but we were all in quarantine. People would take anything they could get at this point because there was, there was nothing, nothing else they, they could, could do. do. Later on in quarantine, Blocks Fruits released Update 11. This update finally added Fruit Awakenings for the second C. This update also heavily focused on balance changes and bug fixes. Blocks Fruits was finally being restored to what it once was at its peak. Another three months would pass before Update 12 was published, and this update was like no other one we had seen before. Update 12 released the first ever holiday event, the Halloween event. This update added various Halloween-themed items such as the Ghoul Mask, Blue Spiky Coat, and Red Spiky Coat. On December 12th, 2020, Blocks Fruits gave us another holiday-themed event. This time, it was the Christmas event. The Christmas event was much more hyped up than the Halloween event. It introduced a limited edition currency called Candy, which could be used to buy rare items such as the Elf Hat, Santa Hat, and Sleigh Boat. After buying these items, you were also able to buy stuff like Double XP, Stat Refunds, and Race Rerolls. Shortly after the Christmas event, Update 14 was out. The level cap was raised to 1,500, and Forgotten Island was added. Over half a year would go by before Blocks Roots would update again. Eventually, though, in September of 2021, Blocks Roots released Update 15. Update 15 gave us the third C, which included five islands. The Floating Turtle, Hydra Island, Port Town, Great Tree, and Castle of the Sea. There were seven new fruits, Spin, Door, Hilo, Diamond, Love, and Falcon. Trading was also implemented, which started an entire economy system in Blocks Roots. This was a really good addition to the game, but it also led to thousands of players getting scammed. To prevent scamming, Blocks Roots had to hire a way bigger admin team. Three months later, we got update 16, which gave us another Halloween event. This Halloween event was way better than the previous one. A new currency called Bones was added, which could be used to buy limited items such as the Golden Sun Hat, Bear Ears, and perks like Double XP or Random Blocks Roots. You were able to get Bones at the new Haunted Castle Islands, and everyone was happy with this event. Just like the year prior, Blocks Roots also gave us a Christmas event after Halloween. The Christmas event though was basically just a repeat of the first one, but the max level was increased to 2,200. The Blocks Roots developers still wanted time to improve Update 17 though, so another six months would go by before the rest of it was released. And this basically puts us in the current day of Blocks Roots. After this update, Blocks Roots became and currently is the most popular game on Roblox. If you guys made it this far, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you all in the next video.